Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today we're taking a look at Motu Origins Panthor. Now, some of you might be saying, hold on, you already did this review. And you're mostly right. <laughs> so this Panthor is a bit different than the one I reviewed previously. This is the Special Collector's Edition that's only available at Walmart. And what makes this guy so special is that he's actually covered in what they call realistic fur or flocking all around the plastic. Because like a velvety texture. And that's actually accurate to the original Panthor toy. The original Panthor was flocked like that. Now, why they saved that for a special edition, I don't really know. I don't know if the process of flocking the toy is, you know, really expensive nowadays. Because it is more, more expensive than the standard figure. This retails at 40 bucks. Like, without markups. So, I I'm guessing that flocking a toy is just really expensive now. Especially an articulated one like this. So, my best guess here would be that they saved this one for a special edition because they weren't sure how well it was going to sell for, you know, this expensive version. And they released a more general, you know, plastic fur version for people that want an affordable option. Now, personally, if I had realized that Panther was supposed to be flocked, and that wasn't just some weird gimmick, I would have picked this guy up before getting, you know, the regular one. But I didn't realize it until I got in hand and did some research. So it felt kind of silly. And I thought I'd missed the window on this guy because he came out like a good while ago. But thanks to the sightings of some great, great lads on TFW 2005, I was able to locate a Walmart in my area that had some of these left. And I managed to get the last one today. So good times. So, if you've seen my reviews before, you know how this goes. We're going to take a look at Panthor's packaging. A bit more briefly than normal because we've pretty much already seen it. And then we'll open it up and we'll get a good look at Panthor itself. Check out the new flocking, you know, mess around with the posability again. I'll be doing a few comparisons and group shots today. And then at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So Panthor comes in packaging, which is almost identical to the regular plastic versions, like... All this up top's the same, right? It's got the same call-outs. Awesome Fearless Fighter, movable armor, all that. Got the cool scene of, like, Skeletor mounted atop of him with um, uh, He-Man and Tila charging in. Now, the big difference comes right here. You get this little bit here, this little starburst that says Realistic Fur. And you get this really nice little collector's edition call-out on the bottom, which makes it look really premium. So, yeah, that's really nice. I, I do appreciate that they make this not exactly the same box. There's Fisto and the big Centaur there. And here we get what I'm pretty sure is exactly the same bit of back packaging that's on the standard version. Since they don't have to use any photos or anything, there's no need to have like separate pictures or anything like that for the flock version. So same really cool shot of Skeletor charging in, facing down He-Man. Uh, you'll notice here, this time, they're wearing their battle armor as opposed to their regular outfits, so that's cool. Uh, fiercely obedient Skeletor, Panther carries his nefarious master in combat, so that's still the same. Removable battle armor, twist and power positions, all that. Then we get our cross cells for his accompanying wave. So one thing that's cool about the bigger box is that they have more room for cross cells, so you get to see more of the other figures out there instead of the usual, like, six. So pretty neat. Get those weird dinosaur lizard things on the side again. Okay, so that's the packaging, all nice and spruced up with some special edition branding. Now let's open this up and take a look at the truly retrofied version of Panthor. All right, now we get to see Panthor out of the box. Now with the lights on him, you can really see that flocking shine. You can see like the light reflecting off of it. And he's covered almost entirely with this flocking. It's pretty cool, even on the bottoms of his feet there. You also see that being flocked, he attracts like every strand of dog hair in my entire house, so that's going to be fun cleaning him off constantly. Uh, so yeah, the only parts that aren't actually covered are the joints here and the legs. They're bare so that you can, you know, actually move them without too much friction. There is a little bit more friction than, you know, there is on the regular version because of the flocking, so it's a good thing there's not, you know, even more than that. Um, and then inside the mouth, obviously, is bare plastic, and then on the eyes and the tip of the nose there. So, you know, he's got a pretty close to total coverage. And then the parts that aren't covered, you know, they kind of make sense. But doesn't hinder his posability much at all. 
head still moves up and down, side to side, mouth still opens. The legs are still mostly fully articulated, except of course at the ankles, which is a big issue with this mold because without having, you know, opposable ankles, most of his leg articulation doesn't end up mattering too much. Uh, the tail can rotate full 360 as well as wag up and down. So just like all his mold mates. And I gotta say, he just, he looks really good. He's very regal looking. That realistic fur really just helps, I think, sell the toy in my opinion. Gets rid of that like cartoony plastic -y, uh, exterior that the Wave 3 Panthor had. And I think overall just makes him that much better. Speaking of the Wave 3 Panthor, here that is. And it really appears that the only difference between these two is the flocking. Like the saddle appears to be the exact same color, the paints used, all that. And one thing that's interesting is that the flocking does give our new Panthor a deeper shade of purple. This one's almost, almost magenta in color, whereas this guy is a very deep purple color. And honestly, I really think it makes him look better. I think it matches up closer to the colors that he's you know typically given and just makes him far more realistic looking. And I can't say for sure, but I'm pretty positive that the actual like molded detail underneath the flocking is exactly the same as what we see here. You can kind of see imprints of it, how like when the you know fur is shaggier here on the chest, the flocking here is rougher. So yeah, I think it really is just the same toy with a little bit of fuzziness thrown on. Now, one thing this gives me hope for is a proper update of the vintage Mossman toy, because that was the other figure out there that was a flocked toy. Now his was much longer, it was less you know, velvety and more like actual little hairs. But if they're willing to do it for this release, even if they charge a little more, maybe they will do some sort of you know special release, it might be a little more than your standard $15 you know, core class price, maybe it would be like 20, 25, but hopefully we can get a proper Mossman update, because as of right now, we don't have one. The closest we've received is the Revelation toy, so yeah, fingers crossed on that. Of course, we can't have Panthor here without comparing him to his heroic foil, Battle Cat. Now, for anyone that doesn't know, these two are purely, like, straight recolors of each other. They have the same fur detail, same posability, same saddle, all that. The only difference is that Battle Cat includes a helmet here, which you can always take off. You want to see, you know, how his face compares, and, you know, they do a very different approach between their two faces. Panthor's face is more painted specifically on the eyes and the nose there to, I guess, better distinguish his features against that dark purple. Whereas Battle Cat, I don't know if it was an artistic choice or they just invested less paint there because he's gonna have a helmet on a lot of the time. But you can see his eyes and nose don't really stand out much because they're just green like his fur. And I don't know if one's really better or worse than the other. I mean, whereas Battle Cat lacks paint on his nose and eyes, he gets all the striping here. So they just look different. I still wish that Panthor came with a helmet of his own. I mean, we have like the classics inspired spike helmet that you actually do see in the Revelation cartoon here recently. And I think if they're gonna charge the same amount for these, or in the flock Panthor's case, even more, because he's like 40 bucks, a helmet shouldn't really be breaking the budget there. I don't know why they couldn't have included that as like an optional piece if you wanted him to have a little bit of headgear. I still am a little salty about the fact that he doesn't come with that. Now, Panthor is cool enough on his own, but the real reason this toy exists is to serve as a mount for your evil warriors, especially for a certain evil lord of destruction. So here we have our Wave 1 Skeletor riding atop Panthor. And man, they really do look perfect together. And I think the flocked Panthor's deeper purples really just help sell him against Skeletor's color scheme. It puts his color, you know, a lot closer to, like, the darker purplish blue of Skeletor's armor without being the exact same color and thereby, like, drowning it out. So I think he coordinates just a little bit better than the more magenta-hued plastic version. So I think they look fantastic. Or perhaps you want a little more battle-ready Skeletor riding atop Panthor. You can always swap this one out for our battle armor Skeletor that came as part of the second wave of toys there. And look how cool he looks. Actually, stand corrected. Third wave of toys. Sorry. So he came out with the you know regular plastic Panther, but I think he looks even better on this mount. So luckily, if you're a pretty big collector of this line, you have a lot of options. And of course, it's not just Skeletor. You could throw anyone on there. Heck, you could throw a good guy on there if you really want to. I mean, as long as they're built to you know mount on top of something, they should work. 
But I will say there is just a certain perfect synergy that you see between these two. And I'm looking forward to having them displayed, you know, on my shelf together like this. And this is going to complete our look at the new Flocked Panther. Uh, I will say, I think he's a big improvement over the regular version. Now, he's got a price tag to match the improvements. He's about $15 more. Uh, do I think 40 bucks is a fair price for him? No, I don't. Uh, you can't convince me that that flocking is like $15 worth of, you know, investment on him. But it's an exclusive and Walmart, you know, does like to charge a little extra for a lot of their exclusives. Um, if you need proof, just look at the G1 vintage reissues from Transformers. I mean, those went for stupid money. Even the Beast Wars reissues, like $50 for an Ultra Class Megatron or Optimus Primal is just absurd. So, yeah, you are going to pay more than you probably should for this. Now, is it worth it? It, it really depends. Um, I mean, if you don't already have a Panther and you want to get the best version, I could see, you know, kind of forking over the extra money just to have that definitive version. If you already have the Wave 3 Panther, I could really only recommend this guy if you're like an absolute completionist. Because otherwise, the Wave 3 one, you know, it works. Uh, unless you have like a really hardcore attachment to the flocking, I think you'll be okay with just a plastic panther. But it really just comes down to your priorities and your budget. I don't think he's a must-buy compared to the regular one, but if you were only going to get one, I would say maybe just eat the extra cost and get this one, because I think you'll feel a little bit more satisfied with him. Of course, that is just my take on this panther, so now I want to know what you all think of him. Are you looking at picking this guy up, or have you already? I mean, I know he's been out for a while at this point. Uh, he is still available at Walmarts. I do see him pop up still from time to time. So he is still out there if you want to get him. Um, or you, are you not interested in this? Maybe the cost is too high, or you don't really care about the flocking, or do you not like the flocking? Do you actually prefer the plastic one? That'd be you know something interesting to hear. Any and all feedback is always welcome in the comment section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. I thank you for joining me for this look at the new Walmart exclusive Masters of the Universe Origins Flocked Panther. And with all that said, I will see you next time.